Hello everybody. Today we want to talk about a subject called hope and opportunity. Hope and opportunity. It talks about how the marketplace and this country has changed over the years. Um, how there's more opportunities but just in a different direction and hopefully to give some background on some of these changes. Um, for many the U.S. No, no longer dominates the world. If you look at some of the uh, countries that are rising today like China, the European market, they've become much more competitive. In fact, if you after World War II, which is in the 1945s, after that, the U.S. produced about 40% of all goods and services. It's an amazing amount. Um, and that was because the other countries were decimated. We were kind of the only game in town, so to speak. Contrast many years later, um, and that that good job that existed after the 1940s, 50s, and even into the 60s because other countries were decimated from the war, um, in some cases no longer exist. We're finding out today that the percent of good jobs, which is paid o over $17 an hour with benefits, has fallen from 25% in, in 1980 to less than uh, a little over 20% today. That may not sound like a big percentage, but that's millions and millions. Um, the, the labor participation rate, the number of full-time jobs, was about 66%. Those people had a full-time job in 2007, and it's now a little above 60%. Um, and that's just in the last 10 years. It's, it's like 62%. Um, and that's almost 6 million people, by the way, now have less of a full-time job. It's a significant occurrence. About they, They've estimated between 28 and 42 million jobs are what's called susceptible to outsourcing, which means they could go overseas. Workers in other countries can do those jobs uh, as good as those in the United States. And to seek lower costs, organizations are moving those jobs overseas. I always say, too, if those organizations do not move those jobs overseas, then um, some business overseas will be created and, and create those jobs anyway. So either way, they're going. Good news is, though, that I really think that people still can make it. It's just a different economy. We used to be an agricultural economy. Uh, then we moved into uh, very much a manufacturing economy in the 50s. It's a different economy today. But I, I believe that with the right ambitions, people can, still can make it. In fact, there's a couple of really interesting statistics that I often use. Only 8% of wealth is inherited. Only 8%. 80% of those people who are classified as rich are first generation, which means they made it on their own. 70% of Forbes 400, if you look at the Forbes 400 list, 70% of those people on the list are self-made. Pretty amazing. And two-thirds of all millionaires today, two-thirds, are self-employed, which means if you want to become a millionaire, the best chance you have is to own your own business, is to create your own business. The people I've met, and the people I get inspired by, the people I chose to emulate in a way, are those um, that have philosophies and stories that inspire me. So I spend a lot of time trying to research what has made a person successful today. And you get encouraged by their success to emulate their success, to follow their path. And you may know that their path is what I have learned fairly straightforward. They had a good idea. Um, they sacrificed saved money, work, whatever it may take, they sacrificed time with the family, time with the friends, and then they worked hard. Um, as you know, there's very few things that will make you more successful other than working hard. There's just a few. Um, and then they took a risk. Fourth thing is they took a risk. They had a little luck. They had a little help. But in general, that's the process that they followed. I really think that you really can be today anything that you want to be. Um, it may be a little bit more challenging. We pay um, more to the government today than 50 years ago. Not a criticism, it's just more of our money goes there. There's certainly more regulations. There's certainly more global competition. We've talked about that in the 1800s. Only 2% of our economy was open to global competition. Um, and now it's anywhere up to 60% of products or services can be bought overseas, so that's more difficult. So it is more challenging, but I think if you follow that process, um, although it may be a little bit more difficult, may time-consuming, I think that people still can make it. 
it is the possibilities exist um, for those who choose to take them and as always uh, education and experience are the path that one should follow and also getting help along the way hope that gives you a sense of what today's economy is like once we get a sense of what today's economy is like and what it takes to make it today once we know um, the path um, then we can certainly choose to be on that path and achieve the ambitions that are uh, within our journey everybody have a great day look forward to chatting with you again